we now come to the last lecture of the bipolar junction transistor. Let us see what have we achieved in our previous lecture. So, we have explained these common emitter output characteristics and we have identified the breakdown and saturation regions and the active region. Then we have explained the variation of beta with collector current. The beta is small at low collector currents, it increases, reaches a peak and then falls. Please note the range of collector currents considered. This is for a small signal device, all the characteristics that we uh, discuss in this course are for a small signal device. So, the range of the collector current is from 10 power minus 8 amperes to 1 ampere here, which is a very wide range and that is why the axis is logarithmic. The variation of beta on the other hand can be seen to be from about 1 to a peak of somewhere about 70 to 80 okay? and then there is a fall. Next, we also explained the breakdown voltages, the two important breakdown voltages of a bipolar transistor, the VCO, uh, the VCEO and the VCBO. Now, we will start from here in this lecture. First, now let us see if a student is asked to draw the common emitter characteristics qualitatively for a bipolar transistor, how should you go about drawing the characteristics so that all the features are correctly captured. So, this is the way to approach drawing of common emitter current voltage characteristics. So, first we choose the axis IC and VCE. For a PNP transistor, the voltages here are negative and the collector current here is negative. For an NPN transistor, these currents are positive and these voltages are positive. Now, what we should do is we must first identify the saturation and breakdown regions. So, the saturation region is something like this. and this is the breakdown region. Now, having done this, now we must catch the characteristics, noting that the slope of the current versus voltage curves will go on increasing as you move to higher and higher collector currents. Okay? Now, how do you show that? Well, it turns out that if you extend this curve, this is the collector current versus collector voltage curve in the active region. So, this, this is saturation and this region is the so called active region. So, in the active region, if you take this collector current and then you extend it backward, it will meet somewhere here and interestingly, the other curves also will meet almost at the same point. Therefore, the way to draw this active region characteristics is to start from this point and draw the other curves. Okay. This is the way we have to draw the curves for different values of I B and here you have the breakdown. Okay. So, 
this curve should actually be shown going up. So this is the breakdown and now we can join these curves here to as we have already explained these curves do not exactly start at origin but they start from slightly below origin okay but this difference is very very small so one can show when you are showing the voltages in the range of tens of volts and collector current of the order of milliamperes you can assume the characteristics to start from origin so this is the way one should draw the curves then all the features of this uh, current voltage characteristics will be correctly captured that is you will show the curves corresponding to higher and higher base currents to have higher and higher slopes okay so we first identify the saturation region then the breakdown region and between the two you have the active region then you draw the curves in the active region all having increasing slope as you move up and all these curves meeting at a point here and then you complete the picture by drawing the curves in the saturation region okay so this is the way one should draw the ic vce curves now another point what is the importance of the collector to emitter breakdown voltage when the base is open that is bvc eo so either bbc eo or simply vc eo that is collector to emitter breakdown voltage when base is open to understand this let us look at the circuit of a common emitter amplifier okay so this is the circuit diagram of a common emitter amplifier now in this circuit supposing because of some fault this particular base terminal becomes open okay so many faults can occur in the circuit supposing this is the fault the base terminal becoming open in that case the entire collector power supply voltage will come across the collector to emitter because when the base is open the current in the collector is very very small and therefore voltage drops across this resistance and this resistance will be small and entire vcc will come across collector to emitter voltage a collector to emitter now therefore if the transistor doesn't have a good bvc bvc eo that is if unless bvc eo is greater than vcc the transistor will break down and therefore a large current will flow between collector and ground and the power supply will end up delivering a very large current and there can be problems here okay so in fact uh, burning out of the circuit can occur okay or the power supply may trip this kind of things may happen so what you find therefore is whenever the base terminal is open the because of some fault the entire collector voltage appears across the collector to emitter of the transistor okay this is the problem and therefore in this mode of operation of the circuit the breakdown voltage of the transistor should be higher than the collector power supply that you connect and that is the significance of this bvco so whenever you choose a transistor for an appli application you should find out what is the collector voltage Uh, what is the collector power supply that you will have to use for the particular amplifying application and then you must choose a transistor whose bvc eo is more than the power supply voltage okay fine so that completes the discussion of the common emitter output characteristics next let us briefly discuss the common emitter input characteristics as shown in this slide so here 
you see that we are plotting the base current as a function of emitter to base voltage. The circuit diagram is also shown next to the characteristics. Now, what you find is when you change the collector to emitter voltage, your IB versus VB curves are very slightly different for different collector to emitter voltage. So, minus 1 volt, minus 5 volts and minus 10 volts, the characteristics are slightly different. Okay? Uh, now, let us understand these curves. So, common emitter input characteristics. So, since it is a PNP transistor, both these axes are negative. Now, this is nothing but a diode like characteristic. Okay? So, because if you see the uh, slide again, this VB and this IB, okay, this is the IB. So, the relation between these two will be the same as the current voltage characteristics of this diode, emitter based diode. Therefore, you are getting the exponential shape. Now, what we need to understand is why is it that these curves depend on the collector to emitter voltage, right? Why is it that if you increase your collector to emitter voltage magnitude, your curves are shifting to the right. So, this is increasing VCE. For a PNP transistor, this VCE is negative, therefore, we put a modulus here. So, increasing VCE, why are the characteristics slightly different? Now, this is because of base width modulation. Now, as with the output characteristics, we can generate the input characteristics also based on the XX carrier distributions in the emitter, base and collector. So, let us draw the excess carry distribution for different values of VCE, assuming the IB to remain constant. That means, we need to explain that if you maintain your IB constant and when you change your VCE, there will be a small change in VBE. And if VCE is more, the VBE will tend to increase very slightly. Let us see why this should be so. So, let us draw the excess carrier concentration for one value of collector to emitter voltage. Okay? This is the emitter, this is the base and this is the collector. Now, when you increase your collector to emitter voltage, your collector to base voltage will also increase because emitter base voltage is forward bias and there will be a very negligible change in the emitter base voltage. So, because the collector to base voltage will increase, the base width is going to shrink because the depletion layer here is going to increase. Now, but you are maintaining your IB constant. So, if IB should remain constant, then what will be the carrier distribution for a new collector to emitter voltage? Now, you know that the base current in a transistor contributes to the electrons injected into the emitter and also it, it compensates for the recombination of holes in the base in a PNP transistor. So, the electrons here which you are providing part of these are used here for injection into emitter and other part is used for recombination in the base. So, this is the flow diagram.
So, let me remove this E and B to avoid complication. Okay. So, if I B should remain constant and your base width has decreased, now how do you maintain a base current constant? So, base current is sum of this current and that current, okay? recombination current in the base and this. So, only way you can keep the base current constant is to increase the emitter base voltage slightly. So, this is your new this is your new distribution because if your base emitter voltage would have remained same, please note what would have happened. Let us draw the picture again. If emitter base voltage would have remained constant, then your picture would have been like this. This is for one value of base width. And this is for another value of base width. Now, if this is the new picture, the area under this has reduced, although this area has remained same. So, if this area reduces, the recombination in the base reduces. But the base current is sum of the recombination here plus the current here. So, the total current would then have reduced, but we are maintaining I B constant. So, only way of maintaining I B constant therefore, is that this point should slightly shift up. So, that here this also slightly shifts up. So, a total recombination now in the emitter and in the base still remains constant. So, this is the reason why the base voltage has to increase slightly okay, whenever the collector to emitter voltage increases. However, please note that the change in base emitter voltage is really very slight because the recombination current in the base is very, very small particularly in modern transistors. That is why in fact, in many modern transistors you cannot really distinguish between the characteristics I B, V B characteristics for different values of V C E. Okay. So, that explains the input characteristics. Let us look at the slide. We must be aware of the order of the curves uh, or order of the values of currents and voltages involved. So, V B E is about 0.6 volts where the uh, magnitude of V B is 0.6, V B E is negative because it is a PNP transistor. Around 0.6 the current starts rising as it happens in any diode and the order of the current that is the base current is in tens of microamps. Okay. Now, with this we have completed the DC characteristics of the PNP transistor. Now, like we have discussed the common emitter characteristics, you also have common base and common collector characteristics. Now, about these characteristics, you can uh, read up yourselves. You can even develop these characteristics yourselves in the way we have done for the common emitter. What we will do now is to discuss the small signal equivalent circuit. So, let us look at the slides that we showed related to small signal equivalent circuit of the transistor. Now, first we discuss the so called H parameter model. This model is applicable for low frequencies. The circuit diagram is shown. So, we can relate in fact, the small signal equivalent circuit the H parameter model to the DC characteristics that we just discussed. So, now what is happening here is you are incrementing the base current by a very small amount. So, the increment is indicated as lower case i suffix lower case b. So, the small lower case letters indicate the increment. So, when you increment the base current by a small amount, what are the effects? First is an increment in the emitter base voltage. The increment in the emitter base voltage because of increment in I B can be easily seen from the input characteristics which are shown here. 
So, this effect now will be shown in the small signal equivalent circuit as a resistance between the base and emitter. So, this resistance is called H i e, the suffix i stands for input and the suffix e stands for common emitter. So, we are discussing the common emitter H parameter model. So, since because of small uh, because of a small increment i b there is a small increment in emitter base voltage this effect can be readily shown as a resistor okay when i b passes through h i e you get a small emitter base voltage next there is an increment in collector current also because of the increment in base current this increment in collector current because of increment in base current is shown on the output characteristics okay so these are the output characteristics where you find that the collector current increases when you increase the base current so this effect is captured in the equivalent circuit using this current source so the current flowing in the collector because of a change in the base current is hfe times ib actually this is beta times ib so the symbol hfe stands for the e suffix e again stands for common emitter and suffix small f stands for forward gain so input to output gain input to output means forward next supposing you make an increment in the output voltage so far we have made an increment in the input side okay now let us make an increment on the output side so output side you have the collector to emitter power supply if you make a change in the collector to emitter voltage a small change then what is the effect you have two effects one is there is a change in the collector current okay so change in collector current because of the change in VCE, this is reflected by, this is reflected by this particular resistance, okay. So, change in IC because of change in VCE, so change in current between any two terminals because of a change in the voltage between the same two terminals, that is reflect, uh, that is uh, represented by a resistance, okay. Now, this is also shown on the output characteristics basically what it means is that when you change your vce there is a change in the collector current so the slope of these curves is what is the effect that is captured by this particular resistance now this resistance value is 1 by hoe the parameter hoe again its meaning is small e stands for common emitter and the suffix O stands for output, okay. So, since HOE has the units of 1 by resistance, 1 by HOE will have a unit of resistance. So, this is both these two components are derived from the output characteristics. Now, this particular component here, the effect of VCE on the input side there is a small effect okay so there is a change in the emitter base voltage because of a change in the collector to emitter voltage now this is reflected by the input characteristics here by the small change in the current that we just discussed when you change the collector to emitter voltage keeping the base current constant there is a very small change in the base to emitter voltage so this dispersion in the input characteristics is reflected by this particular source okay h r e so here the suffix e stands for common emitter and suffix r stands for reverse gain or reverse feedback okay so because a change in the output is making a change in the input therefore this is a reverse whereas a change in the input when it creates a change in the output you have the suffix f here okay for forward gain now in practice this effect hre is really very very small because 
modern transistors you cannot really distinguish between these characteristics here on the input side. Therefore, the normal uh, common emitter H parameter equivalent circuit has only three parameters H i e, H f e and H o e. Now, how do you derive the equivalent circuit from the device physics? So far we have derived the equivalent circuit from the terminal characteristics. Okay? We have shown how the output characteristics, the changes in the currents and voltages are reflected on the equivalent circuit on the output side and how the changes that are occurring on the input characteristics are reflected on the components of the equivalent circuit on the input side. Okay? So, this is one way of deriving the equivalent circuit, but we can derive the same equivalent circuit from the device physics. Let us see how we can do that. So, let us look at our transistor. So, when you make a change in the emitter base voltage, this is emitter, this is base and this is collector. So, I am sorry, this is uh, base and this is collector. Now, when you make a change in the emitter base voltage, there is a change in the emitter current. So, this can be represented by a resistance. Also, there is a collector current flowing here, which is controlled by the emitter current. We can also regard the collector current to be controlled by the base current or as we did right in the beginning, we could regard the collector current to be controlled by the emitter base voltage. That is when the device is viewed as a transconductance amplifier. So, no matter which way you view, there is a current source here. There are three ways of showing this current source. You can either call it alpha times I e. Now, I am showing the incremental changes. Okay. So, normally the incremental quantities or small signal quantities are indicated by lower case letters. Okay. So, here we can show V e b. This is a PNP transistor. We are considering a PNP transistor. Okay. So, in response to V e b, there is an IE, and there is an IC. This IC is equal to alpha times IE, or you could also write the same thing as beta times small i b this is another way of writing the same thing okay because when you have i e you also have i b alternately you could also show this current as the transconductance effect that is you can show this current as gm times v e b okay so these are the three ways in which you can show this current. Now, change in the collector current because of change in the collector to base or collector to emitter voltage that is base width modulation effect. That effect you can show as a resistance. So, this can be shown in fact, this resistance should be shown within the device. So, we will slightly extend this.
and we show the resistance this P is now shifted down and now base width modulation effect is shown as a resistance here between collector and base. You can also show the same resistance, uh, not the same value, but this resistance because of base width modulation between collector and emitter, when it is a common emitter amplifier. Okay. So, anyway this is the basic circuit. Now, starting with this circuit, how do you arrive at the H parameter equivalent circuit that we shown, that we showed there. Now, the first step is to recognize that you can show this resistance either in the emitter lead or in the base lead. So, let us look at the circuit alone. So, this is E, this is B and this is C. I B, I E, alpha I E. Now, if I shift this resistance here, let us call this resistance R B E or R E B, whichever way, right? It does not matter between base and emitter. Now, or let us call this R E an emitter resistance to avoid confusion. If you shift this resistance in this lead, then the same equivalent circuit looks like this. Now, you must ensure that the voltages and currents are same in both the circuits. Only then this circuit is equivalent to this. To do that, you recognize the fact that the base current is emitter current divided by beta plus 1. So, I B is equal to I E by beta plus 1 or I E is beta plus 1 times I B. Therefore, this voltage emitter base voltage which is small r e into I E can also be written as small r e into 1 plus beta into I B. Therefore, if you shift this resistance in the base lead and if this current is I B and you want to get the same voltage, then this resistance is R E into 1 plus beta. Okay. So, this emitter, this is collector and this is base. Now, the advantage of this circuit is now here emitter seems to be common okay, to collector and base. So, the, for common emitter configuration, one can start with this as the basic equivalent circuit. Now, the same thing if you redraw, it will look like this. Now, I put the emitter current, emitter terminal here, you put the emitter terminal here okay, and shift the base terminal there, then it looks like this. Okay, which can also be redrawn as follows. So, this is your base, this is your emitter, I am sorry, this is your emitter, this is the base and this is the collector. Now, note here that this current is outward when the base current is outward. Okay. So, normal convention is that you show the current that will flow here if the input current is into the terminal. Okay. Now, that is the reason why in the H parameter equivalent circuit, we show this coming down and this increment is shown going in. Okay. So, this is the current which you will call as H 
F E times I B and this is your H I E. You can compare this with the equivalent circuit that is shown on this slide. Okay, you can see the H I E and H F E I B over there. Now, as we said that because of base width modulation, there will be change in the collector current. So, that resistance base width modulation resistance is now put in parallel with this current source. Okay. So, that same resistance which was here, right, which showed the base width modulation and then it came here. Of course, when you do this transformation, this value of the resistance also may change. But right now, we are not concerned about the magnitude. First, let us qualitatively see the arrangement of the components, how it arises. So, now this resistance is there here and this resistance has basically come here. Okay? So, this is how one gets this H parameter equivalent circuit. Okay? Now, some students may have Uh, some doubts about the H parameters, right? Now, these H parameters are discussed in your networks and systems course. Okay? So, please uh, review the material related to H parameters there. If you have some difficulty about this system of H parameters used to represent the input and output relations of any system, but otherwise you understand how from physical considerations you can get this equivalent circuit, okay? how you can develop this equivalent circuit starting from the basic operation of the transistor as we discussed. And as we said, you can also develop the same equivalent circuit from the terminal characteristics. Now, let us do a numerical exercise. Let us find out for the output characteristics that we showed, the measured output characteristics, what are the values of the components of H i e, H f e and 1 by H o e. Okay? So, for this purpose, we should look at the slide which shows us the output characteristics. Now, we will have to choose some bias point, okay? because the values of the components are sensitive to the bias point. Okay? Let us say we choose this bias point, where V C E is minus 5 volts and the corresponding I C is about minus 1.3 milli amperes. Okay? So, our bias point is V C E is minus 5 volts. I C is minus 1.3 milli amperes. We will assume that temperature is 300 K. Now, further we set the frequency because this is a uh, small signal equivalent circuit, small signal characteristics. So, we are applying a sinusoid basically. So, we should know what is the frequency. This H parameter equivalent circuit you can see does not contain any capacitors. Okay? So, this equivalent circuit is used for low frequencies. So, let us say F is 1 kilohertz. This is one typical value of frequency that can be regarded as low. Now, let us start with H i e, the parameter H i e, that is this parameter here. Now, this resistance is the same as this resistance, which is nothing but this resistance here, okay, which is small re into 1 plus beta. And what is this small re? If you go back here, this resistance of the emitter base junction is this small re. Okay? So, again you can also understand in terms of this equivalent circuit. So, this small re is nothing but you know from diode theory, small signal equivalent circuit of a diode the small signal resistance is equal to the thermal voltage by the DC current that is flowing. 
okay. Now this I e is approximately equal to I c because the alpha is very close to 1 for practical transistors this I e is very close to I c. So, we can say this is also approximately equal to V t by I c. In fact, strictly speaking if you want to write in terms of I c then I e is I c by alpha. Okay. So, you will have to multiply this by alpha. but this alpha is very close to 1. So, therefore, we are removing this thing. So, this is nothing but 1 by g m. Okay, this quantity is same as 1 by g m. So, we can therefore, find out this resistance R e into 1 plus beta. If you know the I c which we have chosen as 1.3 milli amperes and also the value of beta at this value of I c. Please recall that we have said that beta varies with collector current. Okay. So, we must know the value of beta at the particular value of I c that we consider. Now, what is that value of beta? Let us look at the output characteristics. The arrow here shows the increment in the collector current because of increment in the base current. The base current increment is 12 micro amperes and you can see the increment in the current, collector current is this much. Turns out that it is approximately about 0.9 milli amperes. So, the beta value is point 0.9 milli amperes by 12 micro amperes. Now, this is nothing but 75. Okay. So, beta is about 75. Now, V t by I c is equal to 26 millivolts at room temperature divided by 1.3 milliamps. This is equal to 20 ohms. Therefore, your small re into 1 plus beta, this Vt by IC is actually approximately small re. So, small re into 1 plus beta is equal to 20 into 76, which is approximately 1.5 kilo ohms. So, this is your value of H i e. Okay. So, you H i e this value here is about 1.5 kilo ohms. Now, value of H f e is nothing but beta. right? So, this we have already estimated this is 75. Now, what is this resistance? How much is it? Now, this H o e by definition is small v c e by small i c. So, change in emitter collector voltage by change in collector current. So, this you can determine again from your output characteristics. Let us look at this slide. Slope of this red curve at this point, which is the same as the slope of this triangle. Okay, you can see that the inclined line of this triangle is parallel to the red line. So, what is the slope of this triangle? One can see that this particular width of the flat segment is 15 volts and the change in the current for this 15 volts is about half a milli ampere. Okay? This is about half a milli ampere. So, therefore, we can write the resistance 1 by H o e as 15 volts by 0 0.5 milliamps that is 30 kilo ohms.
So, this resistance is 30 kilo ohms. So, 1 by HOE is 30 kilo ohms. So, this gives you typical values of parameters okay, for in an equivalent circuit. Now, we said this is a low frequency equivalent circuit. Okay. There is another equivalent circuit which is used commonly at high frequencies. This is the so called hybrid pi equivalent circuit or hybrid pi model. This circuit looks uh, more complicated than the H parameter model but can be developed very easily. There are some important differences as you can see there are some additional capacitances and resistances in this particular equivalent circuit and also the current source has been shown to represent the transconductance effect. So, it is shown controlled by emitter base voltage rather than base current as it happens in a H parameter model. Now, let us develop this particular equivalent circuit and see what the various components represent. So, if you look at your H parameter equivalent circuit here, this resistance H i e is being called, let us mark the uh, terminals base emitter and collector. So, this resistance H i e is being called R pi in the hybrid pi model. Similarly, this source HFE IB is being shown as controlled by the emitter base voltage, therefore it is called GM VBE. This particular resistance is called collector to emitter resistance, so it is RCE. Then you have capacitances. Now, what are the capacitances? Let us look at the device. You have the emitter to base junction capacitance and you have the collector to base junction capacitance. So, these two capacitances can be shown here as this capacitance and this capacitance. So, this is C B C base to collector junction capacitance and C B E base to emitter junction capacitance. Okay, this is the emitter. Now, you find if you look at the slide, a resistance here between base and collector. Now, before that, you find here this terminal is being called B dash rather than B. Now, we will shortly see why this is called B dash and what is the difference between B dash and B. So, you can right now assume that this resistance is R B C instead of R B dash C. Later on we will convert the B to B dash. So, what is the role of this resistance? The role of this resistance is the same as the role of the H R E parameter in the H parameter equivalent circuit. Let us look at that circuit. So, here there is a voltage source which we neglected. This is a very small effect we said. Okay. You want to include this effect, you will have to take this parameter into account. So, in practice this HRE is of the order of 10 power minus 4. Okay. So, this is really very, very small. But still if you want to represent this effect, then in the hybrid pi equivalent circuit, this resistance R B dash C is introduced. Okay. So, you can see because of this resistance, if there is a change in the collector to emitter voltage, there will be a change in the emitter to base voltage because there will be uh, a voltage division between this resistance and this resistance. Okay. So, that is the role of this resistance. So, it is really the H R E of the H parameter equivalent circuit. So, we add this resistance here.
Now right now this terminal is B, we will uh, explain shortly now why this terminal is called B dash and why between B and B dash there is a resistance. So in other words if you look at the slide, we now want to explain why this resistance RB B dash is present. Now for this purpose you must look at the structure of the practical transistor. Okay? So far we have been dealing with an idealized transistor structure, one dimensional structure. Using the one dimensional structure we cannot explain R B B dash and in high frequencies even small resistances become important okay? because these resistances together with the capacitances give rise to time constants. So let us look at the structure of the transistor which we had drawn in the beginning on the first in the first lecture of this particular uh, bipolar transistor discussion. So this is how a typical structure will look like. So this is the emitter, this is the base and this is the collector. Now of course you will have substrate which will be heavily doped. We are considering a discrete transistor. So this is where you have the base contact, this is where you have the emitter contact and this is where you have the collector contact. Now how does the base current flow? The base current flows in this direction here. Since this region is very, very thin, we have said that the base width is of the order of a micron in modern transistors. So since this region is very thin and long, the base current when it is flowing in this particular region encounters a voltage drop. So this, uh, this region, thin and long region has a resistance. Therefore the voltage drop here between base and emitter will not be the same as voltage drop here. That is the effect of this. So this resistance is called that so called RBB dash and what we do is therefore this terminal is called the base, the external terminal and the internal base terminal which is the end of this resistance here is called B dash. So this is B, small b or capital B, right. So in the equivalent circuit we are using lower case letters because we are talking about small signal equivalent circuit. So this terminal is B and the internal terminal of the device is called B dash. So there is a resistance between the external terminal and the so called internal base. So this resistance is what is shown here and now since this is B, this terminal you call B dash and accordingly you change the letters everywhere. So this capacitance will be called C B dash E, this capacitance is C B dash C this resistance is R B dash C, this voltage is V B dash E. Okay? Now this is how you get the hybrid pi equivalent circuit. Okay? Now what are the values of the various parameters in this circuit? Whenever you uh, encounter a parameter, you must know the typical value of this parameter and also the unit. Okay? Now, since we have done the exercise for H parameter equivalent circuit, from there we can easily identify the fact that this R pi is nothing but H i e which was 1.5 kilo ohms for the particular transistor we considered. So that is the order of the value for R pi. Now the G m is nothing but I c by V t which is since 1.3 milliamps by 26 millivolts. So this is 1 by 20. 
ohms. So, 1 by 20 ohms which is same as 50 milli Siemens okay? that is the value of GM. RCE is same as the 1 by HOE. So, this was 30 kilo ohms. The RBB dash, this resistance, it turns out is of the order of 100 to 300 ohms in practice. In fact, every effort is made to reduce this resistance. It is a very serious problem at high frequencies. Later on, we will discuss little bit about the heterojunction bipolar transistor some later in the course and we will explain what is the role of this transistor. Okay. That transistor is also, uh, this transistor is an advanced transistor which is used to avoid some of the problems which we encounter at high frequencies for this simple bipolar transistor. Okay. One of the problems is the RBB dash. Then what are the values of CB dash E? The capacitance CB dash E is of the order of say about 20 picofarads, so tens of picofarads that is the typical value. This capacitance is smaller and is of the order of 2 picofarads. Please note that the collector to base junction is either 0 or reverse biased, right? whereas the emitter base junction is forward biased. So, that is why this capacitance is more. You recall the discussion on the capacitance. Capacitance of a forward biased junction is always more than the capacitance of a reverse biased junction. Now, R B dash C is really a small resistance. It is of the order of tens of mega ohms. Okay. Now, with that we have completed uh, the discussion of the hybrid pi equivalent circuit. This is used at high frequencies because it is more convenient to work with this kind of a circuit when you are considering high frequencies. And by the same reason at low frequencies this capacitances and so on and RBB dash is not important. Therefore, you need not use this complicated equivalent circuit at low frequencies. That is where we use the H parameter equivalent circuit. Now, students have one doubt and this should be clarified. Why change over to this particular scheme of representing the current source as controlled by the emitter base voltage rather than as controlled by the base current as we do in the H parameter equivalent circuit. Now, the reason for this is very important. Please note that if this current was shown as controlled by the base current, that is the base current is the current flowing in here, then it would mean that the current here is because of the current here as well as the current here as well as the current in this lead and the current in this lead, right? because the base current here would flow into the capacitance current uh, through the capacitance and through the resistance and so on. There are so many components at this node. Now, in practice however, the transistor action is only there or the transistor action transfers only the current in this particular resistance to the output it does not transfer the current through the capacitance to the output. Please understand this point, this is very important. The basically, the transistor action only transfers the current through the resistance to the output. Okay? You just go back and you will realize this. Therefore, it will be erroneous to show this current source to be controlled by base current because then it would mean this current is also controlled by the current through the capacitance and resistance. So, to avoid this problem, we must show this current source as controlled only by the emitter base voltage. Okay? Then the effect of the capacitance is not coming in this current which is how it should be and effect of other components also is not coming in. Okay? So, with that we complete the discussion of the bipolar transistor. Let us quickly summarize what we did in these uh, lectures on bipolar transistor. First, we looked at the historical account of how this device came into being. Then we discussed the device structure. Then we idealized the structure and using this idealized structure, we discussed the basics of transistor action. We discussed how the current transfer occurs from forward biased emitter junction to zero biased collector junction. Then we saw the effects of DC bias across the collector junction. 
then we consider the small signal amplification. We came to the common emitter current voltage characteristics which we discussed in detail these are the DC characteristics and then finally we considered the AC characteristics or small signal equivalent circuits. 